Ethiopia established formal diplomatic relations with the United Kingdom in the 1890s to advance social, economic, and political interests. Since then, the relation has shown both qualitative and quantitative improvements. These days, the relation even further diversified from Millennium Development Goals to peace and security, from development cooperation to foreign direct investment. At this time in point, there are a number of British investors who are investing and in process to invest in Ethiopia, making use of the ample investment opportunities and incentives in the country. So far, uh, we, had, we have uh, 148 uh, British investors uh, in partnership and on their own in most sectors of the economy. Uh, out of the 148, 107 are in operation and uh, uh, 47, I mean 41, are un in, in, under implementation. Uh, this does not, these uh, actually does, do not include the ones which are in the pre-implementation phase. And so um, the inflow of uh, British investors uh, into Ethiopia is increasing in an increasing rate. Ethiopia has a very strong investment potentials in the area of agriculture, agro-processing, energy, infrastructure, tourism and mining. Because of this, the country has become one of the top investment destinations in Africa. Many investors from the United Kingdom have been investing in different areas of investment in Ethiopia. Uh, the British investors are in almost all sectors of the economy. Uh, we have British investors in agriculture, uh, we have British investors in manufacturing, uh, we have British investors in hotels, uh, we have British investors in consultant services, uh, we have British investors in educational services, we have British investors in health services. So I can say they are in almost all sectors of the economy. The Ethiopian government has put in place legal and institutional frameworks with a view to create an enabling investment environment. Investment incentives such as duty-free importation schemes, tax holiday, bank loans, and export incentives are also implemented to encourage private investments. Now, these major incentives have started bearing fruits whereby attracting substantial foreign direct investment to the country. There are comprehensive packages of uh, fiscal incentives given to both foreign and domestic investors. One is uh, they, are, uh, in, they are allowed uh, to import their capital goods uh, and accessories duty-free. In addition, uh, they are uh, allowed to import spare parts, uh, worth of 15% of the value of imported capital goods duty-free. In addition to that, tax holidays ranging from two up to seven years, uh, especially uh, for investments in agriculture, in agro-processing or manufacturing are given. Uh, there are also other supports uh, given to uh, foreign investors by the Ethiopian Investment Agency and other government institutions. Recently, Ethiopia UK Investment Trade and Tourism Forum was held in London mainly to plead with British investors to do business in Ethiopia and to promote investment opportunities of the country. The forum was organized by Wafa Marketing and Promotion in collaboration with the Ethiopian Embassy in London along with the British Embassy in Addis Ababa. At the forum, more than 300 investors, businesses, government and private agencies invited guests as well as members of the Ethiopian diasporas residing in the UK had took part. Many European investors from Great Britain, Wales, Northern Ireland and Scotland were also among the participants of the forum. This gathering is the first investment forum between Ethiopia and the United Kingdom. The Ethiopia-UK uh, Investment, Trade and uh, Tourism Forum was organized at uh, the Savoy place in the central London on the 9th of June uh, 2011. Uh, now, to promote in that forum the high-level high delegation from Ethiopia led by the uh, Deputy Prime Minister and Foreign Affairs uh, went to London and uh, the delegation actually consists of high-level government officials and uh, business people. Uh, from the UK side, uh, the high-level government officials and uh, 
business people uh, were uh, attending. And uh, actually, uh, the business people, the number of business people was estimated at 300. And um, it was actually uh, a very nice attendance. The day-long forum discussed major economic activities in four sessions with particular focus on investment, mining, energy, agriculture, agro-processing, tourism, and infrastructure. The forum was mainly aimed at promoting investment opportunities in Ethiopia and fostering good image of the country. The main purpose of the forum was to promote Ethiopia as an investment destination, as an investment trade and tourism destination. So uh, it was for the purpose of uh, general promotion, image building and investment generation. So that is general promotion and specific promotion. It took more than a year to organize the IFIO UK Investment, Trade and Tourism Forum in London. The forum was successful in achieving its set goals and promoting the country's investment opportunities. The business people who were attending the forum was very, very enthusiastic, uh, very interested uh, in, in, the, in the presentations. And after the presentations, uh, we, had, we were very busy in the one-to-one -one, uh, 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 discussions. Uh, so uh, we feel we had properly conveyed uh, our message. And uh, uh, it seems that uh, they are uh, very much interested uh, to consider Ethiopia as their investment, uh, trade, and tourism destinations. So uh, I think it is successful in that manner. On the occasion, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Foreign Affairs Haile Mariam Dassale stressed the need to organize such forum to further speed up the Ethiopian development by engaging in investment, trade and tourism for mutual benefits. Ethiopia has drawn up foreign policy focused on squarely tackling economic backwardness, poverty, lack of good governance and democracy, that's why economic diplomacy is at the center of our foreign policy as a nation seeking rapid economic development together with the object of advancing democracy. The realization of the viable Ethiopia hinges on sustainable economic growth and a stable democracy. Committed to such lofty ideas, the Ethiopian government set in motion a development strategy which made it possible for the nation to achieve over the past eight years or so an annual growth rate of about 11 <coughs> percent. Quite an unprecedented feat in the history of the ancient African nation. Government policies from foreign through to development were marked in a way reflecting the needs and aspirations of the Ethiopian people. The forum was taking place in four sessions. Several presentations and discussions were held among various stakeholders with particular emphasis on investment, trade and tourism potentials and opportunities in Ethiopia. In the forum uh, there were 18 presentations, uh, one of which was uh, mine, and uh, we presented on the basis of uh, PowerPoint. And uh, we uh, actually presented the Ethiopian investment, uh, trade, and tourism uh, opportunities and uh, conditions in Ethiopia. And in addition to that, we had uh, specific promotions, one-to-one -one or bilateral uh, promotions with the would-be interested uh, business people. After the presentations, there were uh, questions uh, related to our presentations, related to uh, the investment, uh, trade, and uh, tourism opportunities, and the conditions uh, in Ethiopia. And uh, they seem to be uh, very happy about the uh, uh, tangible informations which they uh, heard. And uh, they told us that uh, they are very much interested to consider Ethiopia as their investment, trade and tourism uh, destinations. 
The Ethiopian five-year growth and transformation plan and the Grand Renaissance Dam project were the other focus areas of discussion that the Ethiopia UK Investment Forum dealt with. The five-year growth and transformation plan envisages to lay foundation for the industrial sector that will take over the agricultural sector of the country's economy in the coming few years. The plan has given due attention for telecom expansion, irrigation schemes, power generation, construction of transport infrastructure, and social services. According to the plan, the number of mobile subscribers will reach over 61 million and primary health care will be accessible across the nation over the next five years. In addition, a railway network searching for about 2,400 kilometers across the nation is part of the grand scheme to completely revamp a sector which of course is instrumental in transforming the economy. In yet another grand scheme, the five year growth and transformation plan the Ethiopian government envisages doubling agricultural production and the gross domestic product and sustaining the rate of growth to 14.9% in the best case scenario. Indeed, this London Investment and Trade Promotion Forum is taking place when the government and people of Ethiopia are poised to intensify economic activities in areas of agro-processing both intensive and commercial farming, road and railway construction, ICT services expansion, trade and investment, as well as energy infrastructure development. Between now and 2050, 2015, the GDP will lay the foundation for the industrial sector to take lead in the economy. The role of private sector is believed very important in realizing the five-year growth and transformation plan. Of course, the participation of private sector in all spheres of economy is gaining momentum over the time. For instance, the most important sectors such as textile and garments, leather and leather product and services are mainly run by the private sector. In recent years, large-scale agro-investment and commercial farming is growing rapidly, with diversification taking firm ground the export sector is also showing a remarkable progress. As a case in point, floriculture has made Ethiopia as one of the leading exporters in Africa. Oil seeds, horticulture products, meat and live animals, garment and laser products are some of the export items that help the nation earn revenues in hard currency. Ethiopia has now laid the foundation for the construction of the Grand Renaissance Dam, which can generate 5,250 megawatt power upon completion. This huge project is said to be one of the biggest hydroelectric power dams in Africa. Since the launching of the project, there is huge public mobilization with high motivation among all Ethiopians, both at home and outside, to realize the construction of the project shortly. Indeed, energy is a key element for economic transformation and this will be an asset for Ethiopia as a new emerging investment destination in Africa. Demand for energy by some estimates grow at an annual rate of 20%. With a sense of greater unity and dedication, the Ethiopian peoples and government are in the process of mobilizing $4.7 billion needed to finance the big project. During the EFIO UK Investment, Trade and Tourism Forum, UK Minister for Africa Henry Bellingham highlighted the excellent relation the UK has with Ethiopia. He also outlined the intention of his country to double trade exchange with Ethiopia by 2050 from $200 million to $400 million. Really intensified the bilateral links and increased trade to a very significant extent. Our current bilateral trade is 200 million, which is solid, but it's got to improve. And that's why we're, we're saying as, as part of the enhanced bilateral relationship between the UK and Ethiopia, we're going to double that bilateral trade by 2015, up to 400 million. 
Mr. Bellingham says his government would like to see business partnership with emerging African countries by boosting support to British businesses interested in making economic link between the private sector of the nations. He urged British companies to fully exploit the huge investment opportunities that Ethiopia has. According to Mr. Bellingham, UK is working hard to intensify private sector involvement in emerging countries like Ethiopia, forging sustainable partnerships that will lead to development and economic prosperity. In Ethiopia, areas such as agriculture, agro-processing, manufacturing, mining, tourism and infrastructure offer a huge opportunity for investment. As a result, the flow of foreign direct investment to the country is increasing from time to time. There are many investors who have invested and who are, who are in the process of investing in agriculture, in agro-processing, in health services, educational services, in construction, in other sectors of the economy. Uh, so uh, the inflow of uh, direct investment into Ethiopia is increasing in an increasing rate. Uh, if you go out of um, Addis Ababa, for instance, you see a number of investors who have invested in floriculture. There are investors who have invested in manufacturing. Uh, you can see investors who have invested, uh, say, in hotels, uh, in educational services, in, in, in other sectors as well. According to Director General of the Ethiopian Investment Agency, Abi Wolemeskel, the government is doing its level best attracting foreign direct investment to the country. Over the past few years, the flow of foreign direct investment showed magnificent improvement in Ethiopia. If it continues increasing and local investors build up their capacity more, the future of investment in the country will be very bright. Investment is a key determinant factor for growth and development. Uh, without uh, private sector, the participation of the private sector, it is not possible to bring about fast and sustainable economic growth and development. So they support the efforts of the government. Uh, so in light of that, uh, the government is very much committed to encourage the private sector to play a prominent role in the development process. And we encourage foreign investors to uh, fill the gap which have not been filled by domestic investors. Uh, so the British investors are one of these which are encouraged to, to, to invest and support our development efforts. Since Ethiopia is endowed with enormous investment opportunities and since the government is committed to uh, encourage the private sector by providing the necessary incentives and other supporters. I encourage investors to invest into Ethiopia. So I say this is a very high time to invest in Ethiopia. The investment can be by both domestic investors and foreign investors.